and nature. It's yours. It's yours. Accept it. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the revelation of your word in my life today. Acknowledge it. Don't say you are poor. Don't say you have nothing. Don't say you are sickly. Don't say you are sinful. Don't say you are weak. Don't say you are a rat. For everybody to be walking on, you have the divine nature. God dwells in you. The Spirit dwells in you. And the Lord Jesus Christ, when he said, if anyone opens the door, I will come in. It's there. And because it's there, you are not a loser, you are a winner. You are not weak, you are strong. You are not sick, you are well. You are not poor, you are provided for. He meets all the needs of your life. And then you can even spill it over to your neighbor, to your brother, to your sister, to the people around you. Activate that divine nature. You must acknowledge your habit before you can activate it. Ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek, to be given unto you, you'll find. And when you knock, the door will be open. Accept, God is who he says he is. I am what he says I am. I have what he says he has given me. I have what he says I have. He says I have the divine nature. Thank you, Lord, I have. He says I'm a partaker. Thank you, Lord, I am a possessor, a partaker. Accept, appropriate for thanksgiving, appropriate, I have what he says I have, I can do what he says I can do, I possess what he says I possess, it's mine. And now let that divine nature work, express it. Spread it, the faith, express it, the virtue, express it, the knowledge, express it, the temperance, accept, ex express it, the godliness, express it, the patience, express it, the charity, express it. You have it because he says you have it. And as you go through life, activate that divine nature and let the goodness of God flow through you to all people around you. You're victorious. You're an overcomer. You're, You're more, more than a conqueror. In Jesus' name we pray. Anyone having the divine nature there? I said anyone having divine nature there? I pray it should be visibly demonstrated in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Your weakness is gone. Sickness is gone. Doubt is gone. Unbelief is gone. I am strong. Let the weak say, the Lord confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank, we thank you for the revelation of what we have in Christ and what we have through the knowledge of Christ. We are partakers of the divine nature. 
And Lord, we pray the problems that defeated us in the past will no more defeat us from today in Jesus' name. We overcome sin. We overcome sickness. We overcome evil power. We overcome darkness. We overcome oppression. And we live in the activation of the divine nature in Jesus' name. Any of our brethren who are weak in faith will lift them up right now. I will pray, Lord, the energy of the Spirit and the power of the Spirit will penetrate into everyone right now in Jesus' name. Touch everyone miraculously. Transform everyone miraculously. And let the reality of this divine nature be demonstrated through the grace of God, through the power of the Holy Ghost, and through the name of Christ in Jesus' name. Help every one of us as your people to grow up in Jesus' name. We now ascend. We now advance and we're seated in heavenly places together with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let victory follow everyone, everywhere. The children of the conqueror will be more than conquerors in Jesus' name. On the road, keep your people. At home, keep your people. In the night, keep your people. Greater is he that is in each of us than anything, anyone in the world in Jesus' name. Let there be confirmation in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Say is marching forward in the month of March to a location where oil was first discovered, and is now your location for the discovery of full redemption. March with us for unfettered peace, giving salvation. March with us for unlimited access, dealing with every situation. March with us for untapped resources and get drenched in the oil of solution. God. General. Pastor Dr. W. F. Kuruji has given the signal. The Lord said it shall come to pass. Healing shall come to pass. Miracles shall come to pass. Deliverance shall come to pass. And when you hear the final amen, it has come to pass. Message received, sir. Signaling full redemption for all through Christ. March 24 to March 29, 2022. Live at the glory of all lands. By Yelsa State, South South Nigeria, and live on satellite, social media platforms, radio and television stations across the world. Ministry through thought is a pioneer worship leader, Ted Derman. Full redemption for one and all across all faces and races. Connect with the global crusade. No matter how great, how big your problem is, we have a Christ. A savior, a redeemer that will set you free because he has unlimited power. Come for your full redemption global crusade. March with us. And Lord, you are leading us in our church from days coming Monday to talk on the faith that will not fail, on the faith that will not be denied, on the faith that will climb every mountain, that will dry up every river, that will break every yoke, that will dissolve the works of the devil. I pray, Lord, as your people come from this coming Monday, Lord, the faith that will win. The face that will succeed, the faith that will run and not be tired, and the faith that will do everything you called us to do, grant to everyone in Jesus' name.
Okukwe nke ge mwa ganiru, okukwe nke age jiwe boso ikaga yago, okukwe nke age jiwe meye nile, we burundi nde agoza gozi, nye madu nile na ha Jesus. Every sin we found impossible before, from this very moment, will become possible in Jesus. favor your mercies upon us thank you for how you've been with us thank you because we know you have brought us here to do us good we pray and ask that your goodness we all see tonight in jesus name as we sing we pray that the host of heaven will join us in singing and help us lord to feel your touch tonight in jesus name in jesus name we pray amen we have come unto the Lord, we have come unto the Lord, we have come to our Father, we have come to renew strength. We have come, to the Lord. We, have come. we have come to our Father, we have come to renew strength. We have come unto the Lord, we have come. We have come to our Father, we have come to renew strength. We have come, we have come to our Father, we have come to renew strength. Jesus, we are here, Jesus, we are here, Jesus, we are here, we are here for you, Jesus. Jesus, we are here, Jesus, we are here, we are here for you, Jesus, we are here, Jesus, we are here, Father, we are here, we are here for you. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me, wonderful to know it is wonderful to know that jesus died for me wonderful to know my savior died for me my sins were washed away hallelujah it is wonderful to know that jesus died for me wonderful wonderful to know it is wonderful to know that jesus died for me wonderful to know it is wonderful to know that jesus died for me wonderful to know my savior died for me all my sins were washed away hallelujah that jesus died for me wonderful wonderful to know i know my redeemer liveth i know my redeemer liveth I know my Redeemer liveth, he liveth forevermore, do you know? Yes, I know. I know, I know my Redeemer liveth, he liveth forevermore. Do you know your Redeemer lives? Do you know your Redeemer liveth? Do you know your Redeemer liveth? He liveth forevermore, yes, I know. Yes, I know. I know my Redeemer liveth, he liveth forevermore. Do you know why he is Jesus? Do you know why he's so great? After three days, he rose from death. I've never seen a man who rose from death like Jesus Christ. Do you know? Do you know why he is Jesus? Do you know why he's so great? After three days, he rose from death. I've never seen a man who rose from death like Jesus Christ. That is why he's Lord. 
he is Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee must bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Every knee must bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus is the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. In heaven, on earth, Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus is the Lord. Jesus Christ is the My Lord can do all things, so oh, yes. He can do all things, amen. My Lord can do all things. My Lord can save you, oh yes, he can save you. My Lord can deliver, oh yes, he can deliver, amen. My Lord can heal the sick. My Lord can raise the dead. My Lord can do all things, oh yes, he can do all things, amen. That wonderful name, Jesus, that wonderful name, Jesus, that wonderful name, Jesus, there is no other name, I know that wonderful name. Jesus, oh yes, that wonderful name, Jesus, that wonderful name, Jesus, there is no other name I know, revive me, revive me, O oh Lord, revive me, revive me, O oh my Lord. Please revive me, Lord. Revive me, O oh Lord. Revive me. Revive me, O oh Lord. Revive me. Revive me, O oh my Lord. Revival. Pentecostal revival. Revival. Pentecostal revival. Revival, Pentecostal revival, we need your revival, Pentecostal revival, 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 Pentecostal revival, revival, Pentecostal revival. We need your revival, Pentecostal revival. I can see the finger of God rewriting my story. Rewriting my story. I can see the finger of God. Today, today, rewriting my story. I can see the finger of God. Tonight, tonight, rewriting my story. Jesus, the same, the truth and the life. Whosoever cometh to him shall never die. Jesus, the way. 
the truth and the life whosoever cometh to him shall never die jesus the way is the truth and the life whosoever cometh to him shall never die the life whosoever cometh to him shall never die Jesus the same yesterday, today and forever, he is the same today and mighty to save. Today and forever, he is the same today and mighty to save my seeds. Present yesterday, today and forever, he is the same today and mighty to save today and forever. yes he is the same today and mighty to save he is able abundantly able to deliver and to save he is able abundantly able to deliver those who trust in him trust in the lord abundantly able to deliver and to save my god is able abundantly able to deliver those who trust in him the man of calvary he's done it before in your life in my life he will do it again jesus of nazareth he's done it before he man he will do it again jesus of galilee he has done it before in your life in my life he will do it again jesus of calvary he has done it before he will do it again jesus conquered the world and gave us victory 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 hallelujah and gave us victory 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 hallelujah hallelujah jesus conquered the world and gave us victory 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 hallelujah hallelujah oh yes and gave us victory 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 hallelujah by the anointing jesus breaks the yoke by the holy ghost and power just as the prophet said this is the day of the latter days god is moving in his power again by the anointing jesus breaks the yoke it's not by power it's not by might by my spirit saith the lord it's not by power it is not by might said the lord this mountain shall be removed this mountain shall be removed in jesus name this mountain shall be removed by my spirit saith the lord it's not by power it's not by might by my spirit saith the lord the lord knows the way through the wilderness all i have to do is to follow the lord knows the way through the wilderness all i have to do 
is to follow the Lord knows the way through the wilderness all I have to do is to follow the Lord knows the way through the wilderness all I have to do is to follow strength for today each time of the way and all that I need for tomorrow the Lord knows the way through the wilderness all I have to do is to follow follow through the wilderness all I have to do is to follow the Lord knows the way through the wilderness all i have to do is to follow 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 i will follow jesus anywhere everywhere i will follow him follow follow i will follow jesus anywhere he leads me i will follow him follow follow i will follow jesus anywhere yes everywhere i will follow him follow follow i will follow jesus anywhere he leads me i will follow him amen I have found Jesus. Amen. He is able to do all things. Hallelujah. I have found Jesus. Amen. He is able to do all things. Amen. I have found Jesus Christ. Amen. My God is able to do all things. Hallelujah. Amen. I have found Jesus. Amen. My God is able to do all things. Hallelujah. Expect a miracle when you pray. Expect a miracle when you pray. Expect a miracle when you pray. There is power sitting on the throne. Expect a miracle when you pray. When you pray. Expect a miracle when you pray. There is power sitting on the throne. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of God that he should repent. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of God that he should repent. Behold, I've received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it, for God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Behold, I've received commandment to bless and he has blessed and i cannot reverse it for god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent be with me tonight oh never let me by 
Be with me tonight and never pass me by. Let tonight be my night, oh Lord. Let tonight be my night, oh Lord. Oh, never let me by. Be with me tonight and never pass me by. Let tonight be my night, oh Lord. Let tonight be my night, oh Lord. Be with me tonight and never pass me by. Be with me tonight and never pass me by. Let tonight be my night, O oh Lord. Let tonight be my night, O oh Lord. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by, do not pass me by, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by, do not pass me by, Savior, Savior. Hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. Our Father, we thank you for your love that you showed and manifested on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Lord, because Jesus, you came down to this world. You prayed the price for redemption, total redemption, triumphant redemption. We thank you, Lord, because of what you have done. And we pray, Lord, that everyone that hears the word today will take their own benefit out of this sacrifice of the Lord in Jesus' name. For salvation, you pay the price. For sanctification, you pay the price. For a holy life, you pay the price. For healing, you pay the price. For redemption, you pay the price. For deliverance, dominion, you pay the price. Lord, we pray that the devil will not cheat anyone out of our rights, redemptive rights, and salvation rights, and family rights, and even heaven's rights in Jesus' name. We're bought with a price, purchased with a price. Lord, we pray that this price will not be in vain on any one of us in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that you grant us understanding in your word right now. That your truth will set us free. Free from everything you have made us free about on the cross of Calvary. That, Lord, our lives will testify. Jesus paid it all. Our language will testify. Jesus paid it all. Our singing will testify. Jesus paid it all. And the prophet who have in the kingdom will testify, Jesus paid it all. And within us and around us, there will be that testimony ringing out every time, Jesus paid it all. We give the glory to you for what you have done. Receive all the praise and all the glory, all the adoration, all the exaltation in Jesus' name. We pray that the blessing and edification will be for the people of God. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. It's in Exodus chapter 24 that the Lord revealed to the children of Israel about the blood of the covenant. Of course, the blood had appeared before this time. You remember if you're a student of the Bible, a Christian that studies the Bible, that from Genesis chapter 3, there was the fall. Because of the fall, condemnation came. A curse came. Judgment came. Punishment came. And Adam and Eve, our forefathers, were driven out of the Garden of Eden. But at that time, to make a covering for them, a cleansing for them, and to make a kind of salvation for them, a, revive, a kind of redemption for them, the Lord slayed the animal, shed the blood for them on their behalf. 
and then covered them with the skin thereof, telling us right from that time, cleansing and covering salvation and security they come through the shedding of the blood of the lamb and then after that remember exodus chapter 12 that the lord told the children of israel that the angel of death was passing through the land that time and in that night in every home in every house from the top to the bottom and from the highest to the lowest the firstborn will die telling us reminding us the soul that sinneth it shall die and that death was a kind of judgment on individuals, on families, on nations, on the whole world. And then the Lord told the children of Israel at that time, every family to take a lamb and to shed the blood. And again, what they were to do, they were to apply the blood upon the lintels and the post doors of the houses where they were. And then God said, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And then that night they did that, the angel of death passed by. And in every home, in every house, somebody died because the wages of sin is death but then we find the grace of god which gives life eternal all those people that apply the blood they were set free again reminding us forgiveness as well as freedom come through the blood of the lamb and they were to sit in their houses and they were to eat the body of the lamb and when they ate the body of the lamb it was to give them strength because on the one hand we have salvation on the other hand we have healing health and strength and then it comes to this chapter 24 now reminding them what you should never forget that it is the blood of the covenant the blood of the covenant the covenant that sets us free the covenant that saves us, the covenant that heals us, the covenant that sanctifies us, the covenant that secures us, the covenant that gives us victory, the covenant that strengthens us, and the covenant that leads us on the way to heaven. That they were to remember, it is by the blood of the covenant. Open your Bible now with me, Exodus chapter 24. I'm reading verses 7 and 8. Exodus chapter 24, verses 7 and 8. It says, And he took the book of the covenant, and he read in the ear in the audience of the people and they said all that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient there's the human divine partnership in the covenant when you make a covenant is between the Almighty God and the people and then Moses read all the conditions of the covenant read all the things all the terms of the covenant and the people said all that the Lord has said all that the Lord has said all the conditions the Lord has laid down all the terms of consecration the Lord has laid down all the terms of the commission the commitment the Lord has laid down all that the Lord has said we will do and be obedient look at verse 8 and Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people he sprinkled it on the people and said behold the blood of the covenant behold the blood of the covenant believe the blood of the covenant look at the blood of the covenant which the lord has made with you concerning all these words the blood of the covenant the blood of the covenant you read in zechariah coming to almost the end of the old testament now that's the old covenant we're looking at zechariah chapter 9 i'm reading there from verse 9 they were passing on now you need to understand the development of the covenant as you look at the old covenant for for example when you look at genesis it was to be just a lamp for one family and then you come to exodus it was to be a lamp for the whole house as you come to leviticus it's going to be the lamp now for the whole nation as you come to Isaiah it's not just for one individual it's not just for one family it's not just for one nation it's now for the whole world and then they were looking forward to not an animal anymore they were looking forward to a person a person a person because it says unto us a child is born they were looking up to a person unto us a son
God is given. They are looking forward to a person. And then he says, the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor of the Everlasting Father. And he's the Prince of Peace. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And the zeal of the Lord shall do this. They were looking forward to a person. And Zechariah is going to bring it out now. It's not just a person. We're looking for the lamb crucified. They were looking for the lamb that is said that is buried that died they were looking for the lamb that will be buried and they were looking for the person that will take all the sins of the world away the reason one Zechariah chapter 9 I'm reading from verse 9 rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout O daughter of Jerusalem behold thy king cometh unto thee Behold thy king cometh unto thee. Now, they were being told now, of course, if you look at the Old Testament, the lamb that they took was a perfect lamb, was a spotless lamb. It was a, a, pre, a kind of preferred lamb. And when it comes now to telling us what that lamb actually typifies, what that lamb actually represents, it's saying, it's a king, it's a king. Behold thy king cometh. He is just. He is just. It's now a man. It's not just age. It's not an animal now. All those animal sacrifices only represented the Lord Jesus Christ, the very son of God, the son of David, and the son of Abraham. He tells us he is just having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, upon a colt, uh, the fowl of an ass. And then he says, and I will cut off the, uh, the, the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace unto the heathen. It's telling us that it's not only the Jews that will benefit from the sacrifice of the lamb. Then all the Gentiles and the heathen will also benefit. It says his dominion shall be from sea even to sea and from the river even to the ends of the earth. You know there are people that limit the redemption. They limit the sacrifice of Jesus. They limit the salvation of Jesus. Jesus unto, unto some, uh, you know, white people, unto some Jewish people, unto a little nation. But it says, it's dominion that is his error. And the people he covers, and the people he cleanses, and the people he secures, and the people he saves, they'll be from sea to sea. And then it goes on in verse 11, as for thee also by the blood of the covenant you see that as for thee also by the blood of the covenant have i forced have i sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water we were all in that prison we were all bound there confined there restricted there but now he said i set them free i get them out of that pit of the prison and i do that by the blood of the covenant well then exodus talks about the blood of the covenant. Zechariah talks about the blood of the covenant. Uh, that's the Old Testament. The Old Testament is full of evidence of the blood of the new covenant, the, the blood of the covenant. And now it comes to the New Testament. I'm looking at Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. And we're referring to the same blood of the covenant. Hebrews chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 20 and verse 21. What the blood does, what the covenant does, and what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary when he paid the price for our redemption. He he paid the price for salvation. He paid the price for sanctification. He paid the price for security. He paid the price for a holy life, a righteous life, a pure life, a victorious life, a, big, a triumphant life. He paid the price so that by the price he paid and what he purchased for us, we can live victoriously and we can live triumphantly above sin, above evil, above any of those bad habits we had before. He's telling us, look at this, Hebrews chapter 13. And verse, verse 20, it says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus. You know, the New Testament is very, very definite and specific because we're no more in the kindergarten now where they speak to us in parables and they speak to us in uh, you know, symbols and they speak to us in all those typology that he is an animal, an ark, and a book, and this is very clear. Everything was pointing to Jesus. And now that Jesus has come, 
and Jesus has died, and Jesus was buried, and Jesus rose again, and Jesus paid the whole price. We don't need to talk in parables anymore. By the way, do you see that in the Old Testament, all those symbols were there? And then when Jesus came, that transitional period, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, a lot of, a lot of parables, a lot of symbols. By the time you come to Acts of the Apostles, no more parables, no more parables. Everything is now plain. You come to the Romans, everything is now clear. You come to 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, no more parables. Everything is now clear. You come to the epistles, you come to Ephesians, everything is now clear. And then you come to Revelation. And then it tells us and it gives us all that we need to know of the coming of the Lord. Everything is now clear. It's no more like just a lamp. It's not just like, you know, a family will take this. Because Jesus Christ now went to the cross. He has died for us. And because he shed the blood, that blood of the everlasting covenant has now done this for us. Salvation is now available through the blood of the Lamb. Sanctification is now available through the blood of the Lamb. Our security now available through the blood of the Lamb. And then heaven is now available through the blood of the Lamb. Look at that again in chapter 13, verse 20 now. At this very time, it's done. It's not something we're just looking back then at that time. And it is not in the future that this will be. It is right now. And for you to be right now in Jesus' name. Look at this. Now the God of peace. The God of peace. The God of peace that brought again from the dead. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God is mine. I said, thank God is mine. I said, thank God is mine. Our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. There you are again. Through the blood, the blood of the covenant. Through the blood, the blood, the blood of the covenant. As he tells us in the old covenant, is the blood of the covenant. It comes to the New Testament, is the blood of the covenant. It's Jesus Christ that paid the price. And I pray that it will be written upon the tables of your heart. It will be written in your soul, in your spirit, in your mind, in your head. You will know a price has been paid for you. And because of that price that has been paid for you, that's how you escape condemnation. You escape judgment. You escape all the punishment of the sins you have ever committed. Because it says, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, it makes you perfect in every good work to do his will, walking in you that which is well-pleasing. It says it's through the blood of the everlasting covenant, we even are able to live a righteous life. We're able to live a holy life. We're able to live a transformed life. We're able to live a, a triumphant life. And then we're able to do that which is pleasing unto God. It says, pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant, we conquer the enemy. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant, we conquer sin. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant, we conquer the depravity. That is the original uh, kind of powerlessness, sin potence that were brought into this world. You know, temptation comes. We couldn't overcome because in our strength, we couldn't overcome all those signs and all those evidences of depravity. But now Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. And because he died on the cross of Calvary, now we conquer that depravity. And we conquer the power of darkness. We conquer the kingdom of darkness. And we conquer the flesh. We conquer the world. We conquer the devil. We conquer the fall and all the consequences of the fall. That's why we're looking at the word that tells us conquering. We're going to conquer. I said conquering, we're going to conquer. No wonder the Bible tells us, New Testament tells us, it says, nay, in all these things now, we're more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who died for us, who rose again for justification, conquering through the blood covenant. There are three things we're going to look at. Number one, salvation and hope. Salvation and hope through Christ's blood. Salvation and hope. Hope of everlasting life. Hope of eternal life. The hope that as we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ here on earth, and then the blood cleanses us, the blood redeems us, and the blood sets us free. 
and then we live a life, a life that is free, a life that is whole, a life that pleases the Lord. We have hope of life eternal and life that is everlasting. We have hope of living with the Lord ever and ever and ever. It will be so for us, for you and for me in Jesus' name. Salvation and hope through Christ's blood. Number two, sanctification and holiness. Sanctification and holiness through the, his cleansing blood. That blood that cleanses, that blood that purifies, that blood that washes us, that blood that transforms our lives, that blood that gives us an inner triumph, an inner victory, an inner conquering power. Sanctification and holiness through his cleansing blood. Number three, security and heaven. After we're saved, he promises to secure us. He promises to make us live in the kingdom, abide in the kingdom, abide in the world, abide with him, so that we're not coming in and going out and being saved and backsliding and coming in and uh, falling again. But he gives us security. He gives us steadfastness. He gives us stability. And our faith is steadfast and solid in the Lord. And then he takes us to heaven, and it is through the covenant blood security and heaven through the covenant blood he will do it i said he will do it he has done it already i pray that the lord will give you and give me and give us the faith to abide and remain stable and steadfast in the lord until the very end in jesus name security and heaven through the covenant blood. number one now number one is salvation and hope salvation and hope for those of us who are saved we need to remind ourselves the condition of our salvation we need to remind ourselves so that we can have faith in that unfailing word in the faithfulness of the lord that has brought the salvation unto us and for those who have just given their lives to the lord what a wonderful thing as you remind yourself of the very fact that this is how i got saved and this is when i got saved and this is what has given me that salvation and a hope of glory when i leave this world eventually salvation and hope through christ's blood it's not through your own works through christ's blood it's not through the tradition of men through christ's blood it's not i give money to the beggar it's through christ's blood salvation does not come by the works of man's hand Salvation does not come by the religion that people practice. Salvation comes as a result of the fact that we gave our lives to Jesus who gave himself for us. He shed his blood for us. And because he shed his blood for us, we can say, praise the Lord Jesus paid it all. And because he paid the, the price for my redemption, the price for my salvation, I believe, I believe. And that faith brings us salvation. I pray that that assurance of salvation, the Lord will register in every heart in Jesus' name. I'm looking at uh, Matthew chapter 26 and verse 28. Matthew chapter 26. And we're looking at verse 28. Salvation and hope. Salvation and hope. And it's through the blood of Jesus, through Christ's blood. Matthew chapter 26. And we're looking at verse 28. For this is my blood. This is my blood. The Lord Jesus Christ was about to die about to go to the cross, about to go and pay the price. And because he was about to go and pay the price, here is what he said to the people, this is my blood of the new covenant. The word testament there, the same thing, covenant, testament, testament, covenant, the same thing is the blood of the new covenant, the blood of the new testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. He said, this blood is shed for many. Many in what way? Many in the world at that time, many in the world in every generation, many in every nation, many in many nations, many all over from that time until it will come again, many, many in every century. And today, as many as will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they will discover that the blood has been shed for many. The blood has been shed for many. Many that have transgressed the word of the Lord. They have transgressed the work of the Lord. They have transgressed the will of the Lord. Now Jesus died to pay the price for everyone. And he said, this is my blood. There will never be another source of salvation. 
there'll never be another means of salvation. There has never been and there will never be another reason for us to be saved. It is the blood of the Lamb. It is the blood of the Lamb. And that is why he said, this is my blood. It is not the blood of the martyr. It's not the blood of Stephen. It's not the blood of a religious man. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. It is the blood of our only Savior. It is the blood of the one that died for us on the cross of Calvary. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of their sins. And the moment you place your faith and your trust and your confidence in that blood of the Lamb, all the sins will be forgiven in Jesus' name. I said, all the sins will be forgiven in Jesus' name. I told you before that the story is coming all the way from Exodus. Exodus chapter 12, look at this now. Exodus chapter 12, and I'm reading from verse 12. Exodus chapter 12, we're reading from verse 12. This is where it was first made very clear, very plain to the people that it is the blood that gives the cleansing. Is the blood that gives the covering. Is the blood that gives the salvation. Is the blood that sets us free from every form of judgment and punishment because of our sins. Exodus chapter 12, reading from verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. He says, I'm the Lord. I bring judgment against sin. I bring judgment against all those gods, all those idols, whether it's of Egypt or of any other nation. And then he says in verse 13, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, praise the Lord. And when I see the blood, I say, praise the Lord. And when I see the blood, the Egyptians were sinners, but they didn't have any sacrifice, acceptable sacrifice. They didn't have any substitute, acceptable substitute. They didn't have anything they could show that God will overlook their sin, will pass over their sin, will forgive their sin, will cleanse their sin. But the Israelites, because they saw the way of redemption, and the way the Lord had described unto them, and they were to kill the lamb, and they were to apply the blood. And then the Almighty God said, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will not see the sin of the people inside there. When I see the blood, I will not see the shortcoming of the people inside there. When I see the blood, I will not see the depravity of the people inside there. When I see the blood, I will not see the judgment that shall come upon the people in that house. But when I see the blood, I pray we'll see the blood concerning you. I said we'll see the blood concerning you. All that you've done in the past, you know, many times your conscience is still looking at all you did in the past. But the Lord is saying, if you have put your faith in Jesus, if you have put your confidence in Jesus, if you have put your trust in Jesus, you have looked to Calvary by faith. He died for me. He paid the price for me. He shed his blood for me. He covers me with the blood. He cleanses me with the blood. He sets me apart with the blood. He saved me by the blood. He sanctified me by the blood. The Lord is saying, when I see the blood, and then he says, when I see the blood, in that verse 13, he says, I will pass over you. I will pass over you. I will pass over you. Give heaven a great amen. Amen. And the plague shall not be upon you, and the punishment shall not be upon you, and the calamity can, shall not be upon you, and the judgment shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, that's where our salvation comes from, from the blood of the Lamb. That's where our redemption comes from, from the blood of the Lamb. That's where our forgiveness comes from, the blood of the Lamb. That is why the remission of sin comes from, the blood of the Lamb. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. We're looking at Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. Leviticus chapter 17, we're looking at verse 11. Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. For the 
life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. I've given you the blood to make an atonement for your soul. I've given you the blood, the blood, the blood of the Lamb as an atonement for your soul. And it says, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. It is the blood. I need to remind you again, it's not the work of your hand that makes atonement for your sin. It is not your religiosity, your religion that makes atonement for your sin. It is not your own sacrifice that makes atonement for your sin. It is not what you have done. It is not what you have done that makes atonement for your sin. It is not the money you have given to poor people, needy people that makes atonement for your sin. It is not your regularity in church service that makes atonement for your sin. It is not the name of your church, the name of your denomination that makes atonement for your sin. It is not for your what your daddy did and what your mommy did in religion. He built a church for your village. He built a church for your tribe. It is not that that makes atonement for sin. For it tastes the blood. It tastes the blood. And it is not just any blood. The blood of any deacon Harry. The blood of an animal now. Or the blood of any.